Hello. In this video, Marty Joyce, Hazmat Program Coordinator here at the Montgomery County Fire Academy, will demonstrate how to properly perform an operational check on an SCBA. Marty is wearing prescription glasses. If you don't use prescription eyewear, wear safety glasses. The first step is to visually inspect the SCBA to see if it is soiled or contaminated. If it is dirty, it needs to be cleaned following manufacturer's recommendations. This SCBA is clean. It's manufactured by MSA. Regardless of what type of SCBA your department uses, the procedure for making sure it is operational and safe to use is generally similar for all. After inspecting the unit for cleanliness, you want to check the backpack assembly for any signs of wear or damage. Make sure there are no cracks or signs of scoring. Next, check the straps to make sure they are fully extended and that there are no tangles. Look at the straps closely to make sure there are no burns, cuts, abrasions, or loose stitching. Connect and disconnect the buckles to make sure they work. Now, disconnect the cylinder from the pack. Loosen the coupling and release the retaining system holding the cylinder to the assembly and slide the cylinder out. Inspect the cylinder to make sure there are no gouges, tears, dents, burns, cracks, or other damage. If you can see fibers in the cylinder wrap, immediately take it out of service and release the pressure. Next. Check the cylinder to see that it's filled to the manufacturer's recommended capacity and make sure the valve assembly is undamaged with no cracks or visible defects. Look at the hydrostatic test date to make sure it is current. Cylinders need to have been tested within the last three to five years, depending on the manufacturer's specifications. All wrapped and composite cylinders have a 15 year lifespan from date of manufacture. Before putting the cylinder back into place, check both sides of the backpack assembly to make sure there are no cracks, discoloration, or any other signs of damage. Before you reconnect the coupling, look inside to make sure the O-ring is in place and that there are no indications of wear or damage that would prevent a tight seal. Now, Hand tighten the coupling to the cylinder just until it is snug. Don't over tighten it. Open the cylinder by turning the valve hand wheel until it stops and is completely open. Now is a good time to check the RIC connection and emergency breathing safety supply system, or buddy breather. This is very important. Make sure it is clear of any debris, not damaged in any way, and in good working condition. Different manufacturers and even different models by the same manufacturer will have the RIC connection and buddy breather configured differently. Be sure to familiarize yourself with their location and operation on your SCBA. Now, Working from the cylinder up, look, listen, and feel to make sure there are no air leaks in the connections or along the hoses. Make sure there is no bulging or other damage along the hoses. Go to the remote gauge and check the pressure reading and compare it to the reading on the cylinder's gauge. They should be the same or within the manufacturer's recommendations. The next step is to check the pass device to make sure it is fully functional. 
Press the emergency button to manually activate the alarm. Clear that out and then let it sit without touching it for 30 seconds to make sure it alarms if you're not moving. Let it cycle through all three stages of the alarm. Next, check the regulator. Turn on the emergency bypass purge valve to make sure it is working properly and there's no damage. Now, turn the cylinder off and slowly purge the air out of the line while watching the pressure gauge until the end of service indicator alarm activates. It should sound when gauge indicates 33%. Now, make sure all of the residual air is bled off and then close the bypass purge valve and turn off the pass device. Now, check the battery levels. Press and hold the buttons on the remote gauge. It should show a green light or give a power level indication. Now, check the face piece assembly. It should be cleaned and disinfected after each use. Make sure there are no signs of deterioration, cracks, tears, heat damage, that the lens isn't cracked or smudged, and the connection for the regulator isn't damaged in any way. Also, make sure the head net and straps aren't damaged. Now, put the face mask on. Pull the straps straight back to tighten them and make sure you have a seal. Next, open the cylinder all the way and connect the regulator to make sure it has a good connection and the air is flowing freely. Make sure the voice amplifier in your mask is working properly and if you have a heads up display that it is functioning also. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now disconnect the regulator and turn the cylinder off. Bleed the air off and turn the pass alarm off. Remove the mask by loosening the bottom straps first, the top straps next, and remove the mask by pulling on the net and taking it off from the back to the front. This SCBA checks out and should be returned to service, either in the apparatus or where it is stored. Before doing so, use a disinfectant wipe to clean the mask. Make sure the straps on the harness assembly are in the ready position, fully extended and stowed for rapid deployment.
If for any reason the SCBA is not working or has an issue that needs to be addressed, let a fire company officer know and make sure it is tagged to let everyone know it is out of service.